famous United States Military Academy at West Point holds a wartime graduation five months ahead of schedule. Highest honors are won by Cadet Kellogg, number one man of his class. For the first time, 165 cadets go directly into the Air Corps. Last man of the 409 to graduate receives the traditional burst of applause that goes with his diploma and commission as second lieutenant. Because of rain, the graduating parade is held in the historic courtyard. Finishing four years work in three and a half, they're eager and ready for service. salutes the graduates, the cream of America's young fighting men, off to serve on fighting fronts. The First Lady of the United States comes to sponsor the new aircraft carrier, Yorktown, now ready to replace the gallant ship lost in the Battle of Midway. Completed months ahead of schedule, the Yorktown started down the ways several minutes before the signal was given, and Mrs. Roosevelt had to hurry to break the champagne on the bow. America now has more carriers, more ships of all types than when she entered the war, and they're still building. Crossing 250 pound logs aloft, teams of United States Army artillerymen toughen up for the day when they'll soon be in actual combat overseas. Physical exercise that builds muscles and rugged men. Doctors say this is the healthiest army ever to take the field. Rehearsing final invasion tactics before the real thing, they learn every trick of the dreaded commandos and a few new ideas besides. Real dynamite explosions are set off to give them the experience of being under fire. spatter real bullets just above their heads. Soon these tough soldiers will be fighting the United Nations battles against the Axis. across a landmark of Mussolini's doomed African empire, RAF bombers pursue the fleeing armies of Marshal Rommel. Speeding in from the east, from the west, they shatter the great port of Tripoli, most important Axis supply base on the Mediterranean. Montgomery, commanding the British Eighth Army, hoists a flag of the RAF over a captured German airfield on the road to Tripoli. 
Immediately, British ground crews begin to salvage riddled and abandoned German planes, transferring Hitler's raiders to the RAF, a bit battered, but still able to fly. ahead of the victorious British Army, courageous sappers with electromagnetic detectors listen for landmines left by the retreating Nazis. There, they've located one. Dangerous business. One day's haul. Landmines to trap the British, discovered before they could do any harm. Every square yard of the desert country is carefully marked for safety. Now, along the Majerba River in Tunisia, Allied forces drive in opposite directions. Artillery batteries of the British First Army dueling Nazi planes. Dive bombers attack, and Allied ships speed in to intercept. A Nazi raider is caught by the camera as he's shot down in the ensuing dogfight. In the hills of Tunisia, strongly emplaced German batteries fall back before the concerted Allied attack. Now, American-built trucks and tanks move up all a part of the Allied plan to rout the Axis from Africa. Boston bombers swoop in. Libya has gone. Tripoli has been won. The United Nations have written the end to Mussolini's dreams of empire. ago in Ottawa, Canada, these men brought forth a plan that was to prove a decisive factor in winning the war. The idea, send young men from all parts of the empire to Canada for Air Force training. And from Britain, from New Zealand, from Australia, from the plains and farms and cities of Canada, young men flocked to join the RCAF. Canada became the empire's reservoir for trained airmen. Taking to the air in all kinds of weather, winter and summer, they shorten training time by months. Today, 150 training centers are strung from coast to coast. More than 2,000 buildings, settlements larger than 100 towns, busy training men. The first to graduate remain to teach others. Starting with 3,500 officers and men, the plan now employs nearly 100,000 instructors in all phases of ground and air operations. Now, month after month, new legions leave for fighting fronts. Pilots, observers, gunners, bombardiers. How many have gone overseas is a military secret. But the Nazis know that Canadian-trained airmen have turned the tide against them. Yeah.